All right, so in this video, I basically just want to break down Maya's uh, modeling tool organization. Um, so first thing is make sure you're in the modeling menu set. If you're in any other menu set, you will not see the modeling commands uh, up here or the modeling menus rather. Um, so make sure you're in the modeling menu set. And I'm going to talk about mesh, edit mesh, and mesh tools in this video. I'm not really going to get into mesh display. But I just want to basically explain why certain commands are in certain uh, places in Maya. So the, everything that's in mesh tends to have to do with object level. So you'll have things selected uh, where they'll be green or white like this. So I'll just pull this down. And if I were going to run a Boolean, for instance, I would select the first object that I want to be cut, the object that I want to do the cutting, or objects that I want to do the cutting. And then I just run a Boolean difference on that, and it cuts it right out. All right, so notice that I have these selected white or green, that's object level, and then you run the command on that. Um, so some of these, like if I run smooth, uh, that runs at the object level and is intended to run at the object level, but it will also run at a component level. So if I select a vert here and then run smooth, it will also smooth that vert. So some of these things can run at component level, but they're really largely designed to work at the object mode. All right, uh, edit mesh, just to contrast here, is really intended mostly to work at component level. So for this, you might select edges and double click here and then go under edit mesh and choose to bevel that, right? So I select the edge first. So that means that I have this sort of cyan selection or cyan wireframe and then the kind of tan brown, orange, whatever that is, uh, selection for the component itself in this case. Uh, same if I were gonna do an extrusion, I select those, then I come in and run the command and then it gives me a widget that I can modify it with. So in general, everything that lives in edit mesh is made to work at the component level. Now there are some things, just like I showed you on the last one, that also work here. And in fact, let me do this, I'm gonna run a bevel on this whole thing, right? So if I grab that whole thing and run a bevel on that, it will basically auto-convert my object mode to all edges and we end up with something like this, right? So that does work. Um, and other commands uh, will work as well. For instance, if I were to do this and run an extrude, it will actually give me a manipulator and I can extrude all of those faces. Uh, so it basically just does auto conversion. But all of these commands in here are really intended to work when you have the cyan wireframe and it's working in component mode. So the last one over here, uh, let me just get to object here. The last one over here is mesh tools. So mesh tools are something that require interactive input from the user. So when I select anything from this, it basically changes my tool selection from whatever I have, whatever my, my uh, current tool is, to whatever this tool is. So for instance, if I were to switch this to the multi-cut, you'll see that it'll switch away from that tool and now I have the multi-cut tool selected and it doesn't do anything by default. It requires an interactive input from me. So if I hold control on this and move this and then click, now it inserts that wherever I did the click, right? So most of the, or all of the um, commands that are in here, they basically take over as a tool um, and then you have to do something else in order to actually make that command do something on your mesh. So these are sort of the more interactive things. And as you saw, you know, some of the commands uh, in edit mesh, for instance, if we were to run a, um, an extrude, let me just get back here. Okay, so if we were to run an extrude on this, um, it also has this kind of interactive thing, but it doesn't require that. There is a default that you can give it for creating the extrusion, and in fact, it has already made the extrusion before you use the manipulator. Um, so uh, these can be manipulated after you run the command, uh, but generally these have to be manipulated after you run the command. So, um, so basically that just steps into a tool and then through the tool that runs the command. And the last thing that I wanna point out here is just the modeling toolkit, which is over here on the right side. If you're on channel box and layer editor, you, generally you'll see a tab here, but if you don't, it's just this guy right here. And if that's off altogether, you can just click again to bring that tab out. And this just kind of combines a whole bunch of different modeling options, sort of the most common set of, of tools. So uh, you have various selection modes, constraints, symmetry, and then you have mesh. These commands are the most common commands that come from this menu. 
components. These are the most common ones that come from this menu, and these ones, which are the most common one from this menu. So it just kind of puts them all into one place. Good place to get started. I tend to use marking menus a lot. Uh, so if I wanted to do an extrusion, for instance, if I selected that, I would shift, right click, and drag down to extrude. There are lots of different ways to access things through mine. I don't want to get into all the shortcuts. I just want to show how these menus are related and how this kind of combines all of them. The last thing that I want to mention about the uh, modeling toolkit here is if you have a tool selected and you scroll down to the bottom of this, uh, you'll see that there's a keyboard and mouse shortcuts, which gives you all of the different uh, modifiers you can do on that tool and just makes uh, learning the tool a whole lot better. All right, that's all I want to cover. Hopefully that's helpful.